Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Alrighty then, as some of my subscribers kindly asked, I will show my cats in between this review. But is it right now, or is it in the middle, or at the end remains a mystery. So make sure to watch the whole thing. So, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, long-awaited new entry for the series, let us explore the sales pitch from Epic Game Store. Become Eivo, a legendary Viking warrior on a quest of glory. Explore England's dark ages as you raid your enemies, grow your settlement and build your political power. Lead an epic raid against Saxon troops and fortresses. Dual wield powerful weapons and relive the visceral fighting style of Vikings in the face. Challenge yourself with the most varied collection of enemies in Assassin's Creed ever. Shape the growth of your character with each choice and carve a path of glory. Explore a dark age open world from the shores of Norway and, and the kingdom of England. And of course, personalize your experience by growing your clan's settlement. This is a fun one. So, there are buttloads of settings in this game, truly amazing. You can choose the amount of blood and nudity, turn them all to maximum. Awesome starting menu, to be honest. I've never seen something quite that deep except for the latest Microsoft Flight Simulator, which I can't play because my PC has a piece of diarrhea pusk. Yeah, Estonian word, that last one. You can choose your sex in the beginning, male or female, Eivor, uh, or, or, or let the game decide for you. I always choose a female character anyway. Never have I ever chosen a male character, if possible. Although I truly loved Edward Kenway from Black Flag and Bayek from Origins. So the game begins and immediately you notice that the graphics and the entire game engine is still the same. Graphics look really good from afar, but quite pixelated from up close. You know, I play on a PS4 console, so PC can definitely render it better. The story, thank heavens, you know, it's marvelous, it's intriguing, it's fascinating, it's deep enough for you to care. Rivalry, slaughter and betrayal mixed with passion, greed and dilemma. You know, since you can choose your own path, like uh, should you keep the treasure or give it to others, face danger or give in to your fears, the game will play out as you make those decisions. Some of them have major outcomes, while others work like a local anesthetics. There is both good and a bad ending, which one will you get depends on your decisions. You start your game in a quite plain snowy Norway, which sadly doesn't offer much variety. Mountains and snow, lakes and ice, you know, you know, you know. But, uh, but, but as you travel to England, the beauty with all of its glory becomes apparent. So yes, you know, the game has five maps. Five maps! Norway, England, Vinland, Asgard, and uh, Jotunheim. You know, each of them quite large. And uh, you need to clear them all to get the platinum trophy, you know. <laughs> to make things more clear, I explored England for two days and I only discovered about 20% of the map. You know, the map of England is divided into sections that require a certain amount of power. Of course, you can go there, but most definitely you will get your ass handed to you at some point. All of those maps are full of treasures, and also, you know, they are named wealth, uh, mystery, supplies like uh, iron ingots and ingots in general, uh, gear and abilities, you know, you can find abilities. Mysteries are kind of a short specific quests that sometimes make you laugh, sometimes make you angry. They are small stories that make you wonder how someone would think of, of, of something like that. <laughs> One that truly stuck in my mind was a father who never washed himself and poisoned the quality of life of his family. Things like this. There are 11 different types of mysteries. Flighting is one of them. I truly love this. You're probably too scared to even face me, now that I think about it. Sorry, have you started? Yes, obviously. I said you're probably too scared to face me. See your rhythms how a fool would attempt to debase me. It's a rhythmic dissing in a rhyming manner, rarely missing holding victory banner. Destroy the foe, yield words as you battle, the loser must go, feeling slaughtered like cattle. Charisma you gain if you stay on your course, feeling no pain nor even remorse. Also there's a mystery animal hunt, yeah you can hunt legendary animals. A lot of world events and, you know, offering altars and so on. So there is 
a lot to do, even though some of them are quite similar. Of course, there is still the cult member thingy where you can actually kill the members in this uh, hierarchy and you know, you know, you know, you can see how many bastards you have still yet to kill, you know, that's fun. So your gear, you need to be, you know, fully equipped if you want to kill someone. Your gear is upgradable. You can equip runes to give you this extra oomph. There are specific armor sets like bear armor, you know, that has has a boost of stats the more you have uh, different pieces of it on you. So I, I, I actually like this quite quite a bit. There there are, to be honest, there are not that much different gear items in this game. That makes upgrading your armor and weapons more meaningful. You feel that you haven't lost any resources or for, for nothing. Also your quiva and ration pouch are upgradable. Leather, linen and other stuff is needed to upgrade those. Your bag neatly holds your runes and, and different arrows and materials, also collectibles and trading goods. But with arrows there's an issue, but I will come to that later on. I'm trying to get the good stuff out of the way to clear the road for shit to come. The most impressive thing in this year, this gaming year, has to be the skill tree in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. It's, it's, it is enormous. It's the closest thing I've ever seen to Path of Exile. Vast options to spread out your skill points. There is no word to describe this besides enormous. Every branch leads to another cluster of skills. That, that leads to another branch, that leads to another cluster, that leads to another branch, that leads to another cluster, you, you get the point. I have only scratched the surface of it. The combinations that you can combine with your armor sets and your playstyle. You know, mine is divided totally random to melee skills or you know, whatever the mighty Odin instructed me to pick. The amount of skill points also determines your power level. Power level is important as it lets you know if you are under leveled for some regions. There is also a separate tree for abilities. Those are for ranged and melee combat. Also, these are abilities need their own special energy, adrenaline if I'm not mistaken. So the more adrenaline bars you have, the more abilities you can use. So this is like a special attack of some sort. The axe in the face. So as mentioned, the maps are huge, filled with stuff to collect and discover. You can, you can travel by boats or on a mount or on foot, which I love that if you use your mount, you can actually put a map marker down and automatically right there. You can actually, you know, scratch your balls or make tea or something and, and your horse will take you there. Once you get to England, your game actually begins. You can raid monasteries, take riches from the monks. For that, you need to assemble an army by blowing your mighty horn. Thus the raid begins. From those monasteries you gain precious building materials for your own settlement in Ravenstorp that over time grows into a buzzing town. All of the townsfolk need housing, places to work, trading routes, food supplies, everything. You need to build it all and it's fantastic. Blacksmiths, trading posts, stables, barracks, fishing huts. These are just a few of those buildings that you can create. Each of those houses have their own specific effect for your settlement. I'm not even going to go into the character specific quests that you can complete regarding those. Diplomacy is also important. Making allies in this new world is crucial. My allies are my cats. Milko and Lemur. Both of them look the same, but they can't be any more different regarding their behavior and even manners. Lemur, which in English means lemur, is a suitable name for a cat, I'm sure. He's, he's more of a soft wuss. He is always scared of sudden movements and noises. He rarely wants any petting. And if he does, he comes and touches my nose with his nose. It's always a slightly wet experience, to be honest. Then he lays down and enjoys a 30 second petting time and when he thinks that he's had enough, he runs away. Milko, on the other hand, is a brave, dog-like creature. He always loves petting. He can stay in weird shapes for a prolonged time and doesn't even react when you pick him up. He's just a malleable ball of fur who enjoys human food, bringing back toys and torturing Lemur. Yes, Milko wants to play, Lemur doesn't. So anyways, back to the game. The game is massive, at least 60 hours, and I mean at least 60 hours. I would say more towards 80, but it's definitely 120 if you're aiming for the platinum trophy, which I'm going to, definitely. But now let's come to the fun part. This game is not at all biscuits and cream. 
Many, many hours go by as you try to collect the wealth without any success. There are places that you can enter only if you have completed a specific quest. Thus, you can't fully explore the game. I have wasted about 5 hours trying to get into a cellar or a house just to be informed that the next quest will open the door for me. <laughs> you would think that, okay, next time you're smarter and wait for the quest. No, 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 no. There are about 90% of the places that you can actually enter. There is always a secret way to enter them, you know? No quests are needed, so you, you never know which it's going to be. Whether it's an underground passage or a hole in the floor, or you may need to shoot a specific arrow in a specific place to make the passage appear, you never know. Like, there was a house that you needed to actually burn down before entering. So my point is that when a location is accessible only via quest, the game should let you know beforehand. So you know, that was my point. But there is no such thing. So you can waste pointless time trying to get the wealth because, you know, you are there anyway. You might as well collect the treasure because I don't want to come back in 40 hours and uh, then, you know, look for it. I'm there now because the map is so huge. I don't want to come back. So, uh, which leads me to another problem. It's almost impossible to find any good guides because the location names on the map are not sufficient enough. One name can be in many places or mark a bigger area than Texas. Useless naming system. I truly hate it. It's like googling how to get into a house with treasure in United States. That's how I feel anyways. There are also a few encampments that you can spend hours upon hours clearing. 60 plus enemies. I killed them all in 2.5 hours. Two and a half hours, you know. <laughs> and didn't get the wealth. Guess what? The next quest was to attack the same encampment. Although all the enemies were respawned. <laughs> also the quest opened all the doors and floors and, and what a load of diarrhea. So the next problem, <laughs> the next problem, yeah, there, there is more yet to come. Your arrows, you can't change between different arrow types. Instead, instead, you need to change bows. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I collected, I collected hundreds upon hundreds of arrows, you know, and still it showed I have six arrows. What the hell? I have six arrows. I've spent four hours of collecting arrows, which I want to use. Then I discovered mm, mm, there is different bow in my menu. I switched it on. Voila! There you go. You have 25 arrows now. What the f is that? Now, glitches. <laughs> the game is filled with bugs. It's riddled with glitches. You need to save very, very often. You, you definitely need to save the game. There were many quests that bugged out. My character was speaking to me. Suddenly, he stopped. In the middle of the water, he stopped. He just stopped walking and talking, you know? And the quest said, follow this guy. What the? F I have followed him like 20 minutes already. Now he's just standing there, you know? Luckily, the game, when I rebooted it, he started walking and talking and, and I got the quest done. But still save your game because it will bug out. Also, there are a lot of quests that say word to word, and I quote, Here is your gold. But there is no gold in the game. Only silver. There is no gold. Why the hell everyone keeps saying gold? I, I don't get it. I don't get it at all. <laughs> it's just uh, something that they totally overlooked. And it's funny. Shivering enemy corpses that penetrate the game's terrain. There, there is stuff like that. Funny one is that when you stand next to a cliff, and call a horse for your mount. Yup, you get a suicide horse. <laughs> it's it's funny, I did it at least 20 times and it made me laugh. Am I a sadist? Do I like torturing animals? Hell no, but this one here made me laugh. Thank you. So yeah, you know, I need to pull the strings here, you know, more tightly together because the review is getting too long already, oh my god. Uh, so the game is massive. Yeah, it, it happens. Some people say that it might get boring. It will get boring, they say, uh, when you do the same thing all over again, you know, collecting stuff, blah, blah, blah. But I like the grind. In here, I like the grind. There is a reward to it. And of course, you know, <laughs> if you want to ease your misery, you can always uh, go to the shop and buy whatever you need, you know, spend real money. But uh, that is only when you hate playing the game itself, so <laughs> I'd rather not. 
And of course, the funny story with this online shop is that it doesn't work. I couldn't even redeem my goats. It was so slow and buggy, you know, <laughs> I don't know if it's a PlayStation Network or something else, but, you know, good luck shopping there. I think that I'll stop here, I can go on, trust me, but it's a simple review from a simple, simple llama, you know, I say no more than I have to, if that. So in conclusion, a huge game with an interesting story, a lot of grinding hours, and multiple outcomes, and a massive world. I give Assassin's Creed Valhalla an 8 out of 10. A lot of mumbling and rambling, but this review is over, and I really, I truly hope that you enjoyed this review. If you did, hit that like, smash that bell, and if you dare, subscribe as well. I'm Silly Lamas, and thanks for watching. Till next time.